If you've ever wondered what kind of music your kids are listening to, we'll give you a hint. In fact, you're about to meet someone your kids probably already know. He's part of the phenomenal Christian pop sensation Plus One. Please welcome to the 700 Club, Jason Perry. Hi. Jason, great to have you with us Thank today. Thank you. Good God to be here. God bless you. Thank you. How do you attribute the incredible success of the group Plus One? You've got number one hits, Screaming Girls. You're like the the in sync of you know Christian music mm -hmm. you've been incredibly popular I think there's a lot of things that we could contribute the success to I think probably the number one thing is having such a great team of people around us mm -hmm. that have facilitated all the things that we've wanted to do and also gone beyond um, anything that we could ever think of from a financial standpoint to excitement to passion to commitment level in making this band successful and I think ultimately the favor of God is the number one thing well let's take a look at you guys in action and in fact here's plus one singing God is in this place God is in this place. Jason, you're sitting there singing along to this whole thing. <laughs> it's kind of hard not to. Yeah, when the music starts going, you mm -hmm. just can't help but, but go with it. Right, right. You were raised in the church, um, part of the youth group. You mm -hmm. sang in church. And yet, as you got a little bit older, you kind of had one foot in the church and one foot in the world. And mm -hmm. the world was really tugging at you. What was, the, what was the draw? What was the pull? What kind of things did you get involved in? Right, you're exactly right. I think um, the draw was definitely, it was wanting to become 
something that I knew I wasn't, but the thing about it was having that tug on my heart from all the, the influences around me. For instance, being in the football locker room with all the guys talking about girls or drugs or drinking on the weekends and doing all the things that were appealing to me. And at first, I resisted it and stood strong all the way up to about my junior year in high school. And then eventually, because of all the influence around me and all the guys saying, hey, you know, you need to do this, you need to do that, and yada, 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 and here I am singing on Sunday morning and playing instruments in church and kind of looking around like, oh, this is this is really cool, you know, kind of sarcastically <laughs> going, this isn't cool at all. All my friends are out partying and so having a good time. Was it a matter of, of acceptance, wanting to be a part of what seemed like, you know, the the group that was in that was uh, popular, that was, you know, doing all the fun, lo what looked like the fun stuff? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, to get that acceptance and to get the affirmation from the people who yeah. were quote unquote popular or the, the leaders in the school of who people looked up yeah. to, to get their affirmation of, yeah, you know, they, okay, Jay, you know, you're, you're cool now, you're, you can hang with us. And I think to get that and seeking that approval out, you know, forced me to do things that I wouldn't, that I didn't want to do. Yeah. Number one, deep down I knew it was wrong, but yet wanting to, wanting to pursue those things and to get that attention, I ended up making a lot of bad choices. Was that after you had joined the Group Plus One and moved out to San Francisco and been a part of all of that? Yeah, that was that was after. That was about a year after uh, we had come together and recorded our first record and started doing some touring. And it wasn't necessarily that I was physically doing a lot of the things and acting out a lot of the things that, that were in my heart, but that was the very issue that needed to be dealt with. It was my heart. What brought you back around to the Lord at that point? I think... Um, being tired of trying to manage it all myself, of trying to figure this whole Christian walk out alone. And really the turning point for me was when I was approached by the man who's now my pastor and who really, by the grace of God, spoke some things into my life that really just shook me up. And for the first time, I found what I was looking for, and that was somebody to really walk with me and to help me figure out what it really meant to be a Christian and to help me build a foundation. That was really the turning point um, that really changed my life. And how did scripture play a part in that? I, Pastor Tim gave mm -hmm. you some uh, scripture memorizing mm -hmm. lessons, didn't he? I mean, just like you were a kid. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It was, it was seriously like Sunday school again, going back and memorizing scriptures. And, and I kind of laughed at first, but I knew that was the very thing I needed because when anybody would ask me about, you know, have you been in the Word? Have you been reading your Bible? It's kind of like, oh, you know, talking out of the side of your mouth because I wasn't, and You're I wasn't in it. the Word. Yeah. And I was faking it. I wasn't, I wasn't doing a lot of the things that I knew I should be doing, but yet trying to cover it up. And so when he approached me and said, you need to get in the Word right now by memorizing the Scripture. It was just like that challenge was what I needed, mm -hmm. you know, because even in this position, you're kind of put on a pedestal and people just assume that everything's okay when in reality that may not be the case. And so the Word of God was the very thing that I needed to get into my heart and into my mind, as Romans 12 talks about, to transform me, and it did. It absolutely did. Do you feel like the purity message needs to be more important to guys? It seems like we hear it mm -hmm. a lot from, from young women, Rebecca St. James and other mm -hmm. female artists, but I'm looking for that guy artist to say, mm -hmm. hey, purity is important for guys. Guys need to take the leadership uh, in the relationship. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and you're right. It, it is, it's going to start with men, you know, with boys becoming men and stepping up to the plate and going, you know, you can do this. You can be pure. It's possible to live this life. But I found that the only way to do it is to live according to the Word of God. Psalm 119.9 says, how can a young man keep his way pure? It says, by living according to the Word of God. In the very next verse, verse 11, David cried out, O oh Lord, I've hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And so that is the very key, and that's the only thing, the only way possible that you can live a pure life. But I had bought into the lie that it's not possible. My generation, society, TV, MTV, all the things around me, I can't do this. So because I'm just a man and because, you know, God made me this way, I'm a sinner, Romans 3.23, for all fallen short of the glory of God. And, you know, a lot of times we take that scripture out of context and use it as a license to sin. Well, yeah, we're all sinners, but there's got to be a point where you step up and go, okay, no, I'm going to live a victorious life. Yeah. I'm not going to let this thing rule me, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk... In, in victory over this thing. And it's possible. It's absolutely possible if you live according to the Word. You have been memorizing your scripture. Mm -hmm. I <laughs> you have just been. rattled a bunch off. <clears throat> Tell me about the book that you've written, You Are Not Your Own. 
driving down the road to Nashville about a year ago, um, the Lord dropped in my, in my heart, I want you to write a book. I had started to do a little bit more talking at some of the shows, um, sharing my testimony at some of the concerts, and I started to get a lot of emails and all kinds of letters of young people saying, hey, you know, what you went through I can really identify with, or, you know, they were really more shocked, I think, than anybody because, um, you know, I think being in this position, it's easier to cover up stuff than to reveal things. Mm -hmm. And so I think one of the strong parts of this book is really the transparency and the vulnerability of really just sharing my heart and my testimony. And I began to get so many letters of young people going, wow, what you went through has ministered to me so much, but not just what you went through, but the fact that you're walking in victory now over a lot of the things that defeated you. And so I thought, you know what, I'm going to write a book about this. But when the, Lord's, when the Lord told me he wanted me to do that, it, I laughed because at that point I didn't even like to read, let alone write a book. And so I was like, <laughs> I can't do this. There's no way. You know, that whole doubt thing came in. And, you know, a couple months went by. I started to jot down some thoughts. And uh, sure enough, like seven months later, I had a book on the shelf. Well, Jason, thank you so much. You are just having such an incredible impact on this generation. And I encourage you to mm -hmm. continue with thank that you. purity message. Thanks God so bless much. you. And again, if you want to get a hold of Jason's mm -hmm. book, uh, You Are Not Your Own, Living Loud for God. I yes. love that part. Yes. Uh, you can get a hold of it on our website at CBN.com. Also, Plus One's latest CD, Obvious, is available on the website. Jason, thanks again for thank being with us today. Much. God bless you. And stay tuned. Next, we'll go back to Virginia Beach Studios with your Bring It On questions.